he's got more. Hey everybody, I'm Black. I'm Ball. And this is kind of just a follow-up video to um, our original videos, like far as how to conversate. And really, it's just kind of centered around like one of the things to something to avoid when trying to have a conversation. And that is cheat code talk. Now, for people that don't know what cheat code talk is, I don't. It's where you. Ho it's kind of like it's kind of like having a gun. I don't know. I don't know where you learn to conversate, but you don't bring a gun to a conversation. And in that gun, the ammunition is actually terms and phrases that can be used to shut people up and shut people out of the conversation. Which, and these, and this ammunition is normally used when people are hearing something that they did not want to hear. But if you're actually going to have the conversation, you got, you can't be doing stuff like that. So I guess a good example of cheat code talk would be like, um, if you were having a conversation, let's say that we're having a, a, a conversation on race relations, like we're just having like a, a racial com uh, conversation. And then based off something that someone said, you want to write that person off as a racist. You have, you have immediately put that person on the defense and you're not having a conversation anymore. You're trying to disparage that person's character and get them out of the conversation. And really, the term at this look, okay, it's been going on for years now. The term racist has kind of like lost its meaning because of how frivolously it's tossed around. It's like, do they, there are people out there with genuine hate in their heart. There is. Whether it be towards a specific race of people or towards a, a specific type of people, there's people out there with genuine hate in their heart. But you won't see them because you're trying to toss it to every single person no matter what it is for the most frivolous things the most trivial things it's ridiculous so i guess cheat code talk falls into the uh falls into the category like if you call somebody racist just at the drop of a dime or you call someone like transphobic or fat pho any phobic any phobic okay if you call anyone any phobic when you're trying to have a conversation, you're using cheat code talk. There are other forms of cheat code talk outside of that though. Whereas like, uh, I've seen certain people in conversations. I'm trying to like, uh, remember a specific example because if I, hmm? the patriarchy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Stepping away from, uh, identity talk and stepping away from racial talk uh, when it comes in, in the gender wars when it comes to gender talk hearing some, when people hear something that they don't want to hear patriarchy is a silver bullet in that, in that space to try and get people out of the conversation and whatever they say just gets swept under the rug at that point if we're really gonna if we're really gonna talk, you can't be out here trying to just disparage everyone's character. That's saying something, not even everything, just something along the lines of something you ain't want to hear. Whether it comes from men or women, it's like if you're a man, you're just mansplaining, and you're part of the patriarchy. If you're a woman, then you are cunt fussing. What? I've cunt never fussing. heard of that before. I did hear that tossed in conversation once. Uh, as the fe as the female equivalent of mansplaining. I've always heard that if a woman tries to be on the side of man, quote unquote, or try to explain against the whole patriarchy nonsense, is that the woman in particular has just been completely molded by that patriarchy and therefore can't think for herself. <gasps> oh my god. Cheat code talk. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You, it's like you try to write off these people and completely disparage their character. It's like, if you're actually going to have the conversation, you can't be out here doing that. Now, you can show up in the conversation. You can speak and still be flat out wrong. But you can't speed handing someone an L. You can't speed that up. You're not handing them a proper L. That's an undercooked L. It's not an L anymore. Those are baked to take the shape of an L. It's gonna fall limp. 
by people out here trying to give out fast food L's. So I guess another form of cheat code talk is like when you play on people's mental stability. I, uh, the easiest example that everyone would know would be how like Kanye West is constantly written off as crazy. Even though when you actually pay attention to what he's saying, more often than not, he's making sense. It's coming out crazy. He doesn't have the best filter. That doesn't mean he's crazy. It comes out in these, di it's like, it's almost like He's a disc that's skipping. The lyrics in the song make coherent sense. You're just missing a word here and a word there. And it's so e it's so easy to fill in the blanks with most of the most of the time when he's talking. But you hear the skips. You hear the skips and it's like, okay, you know what? It's crazy. It's easier to write people off. Stop shit. trying to take the easy way out. I still find it shameful that Kev just dumped, just completely read him off. His own wife, writing him off just because he's skipping. I mean, well, women have the liberty to do that. Till death do us part. Do wedding vows not mean a damn thing anymore? Oh, they don't. Uh, what? Okay, that's a separate conversation, but spoil it's, like, it's like spoiler alert. Like, no. <laughs> then what the fuck is the point of getting married anymore? It's a business agreement. Look, okay, wait, 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 wait. We're getting, we're getting off topic. Well, ah. That is a very important topic, especially for these days. So, but I do agree. That's something for something else. Right, 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 right. But yes, cheat code talk. You have to cut that out. If we're really going to get anywhere that has lasting peace written on it, you gotta stop that cheat code talk. We can still progress using cheat code talk, but where we're gonna end up is gross. I'm not sure if you can call that progression. That may be regression, because, yeah, it would be close to regression. It's like flipping back over to the racism side of things. It's like, if it keeps going the way it's going, we're gonna end up segregated again. Yeah, look, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure this out. It's like, I could have sworn the dream originally was, it's like, isn't America supposed to be the melting pot? I keep seeing all these people talking about preserve your culture, keep it away from people that aren't part of your race. This and it's like, yo, what? It's like, look, 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 look. The same way I say these things that are out in public that come across as a uh, as racist or come across as bad these days, this, that, and the third, whatever have you, is the things that people are trying to get removed, whether it be like a statue or a flag or something that symbolizes whatever have you, whatever. Uh. Don't get rid of it. You can take it out of the pu you can take it out of the public space. Fine, whatever makes you feel better. But you need to archive these things. You need is like I still want that museum, that mistake museum. Eminem, I want it. <laughs> where it's like where it's like okay, it was moved, but it's there, so we don't forget. He's like don't forget. We were completely separated. And we wanted to be able to coexist. And now y'all are trying to bring it back around like, nah, fuck that, separate. See, we were getting along just fine. It's like when I was growing up through elementary school, preschool, junior, mm -hmm. high school, none of this racial, sexist, none of that bullshit was actually in the works around me at my schools. They left the children. That's because they tend to leave the children alone. Right. And the children, the next generation, grew up without those ideologies. A lot of them did. A lot of them didn't. Unless, oh, I was like, unless they saw the movie Roots. <laughs> no, no. Roots was not the, Roots was not the Roots, to be fair. You gotta it didn't give, help. You got to give the parents some credit for, for projecting their prejudices onto their children and making it go on further. And that's the thing about prejudices, because uh, I've had people be prejudiced against me, and I tried to understand it, and like the way they explained it is that they're not racist as much as it's an instilled defense mechanism. It's an ideology that was instilled by their parents, and therefore they adhere to it. And I was like, that's kind of trash. It, okay, not the, it's like not the safest, not the safest thing in the book. Let someone else tell it but I tend to let people paint their own picture 
is like, you're a new person. I haven't seen you and I don't know your backstory. I'm only looking at you. You have to paint your picture for me. Hopefully you're honest. Well, they already put it in the base picture. They built the canvas and the choices that they made and how they dressed and act. That only makes... What percentage does that make of the picture, though? i give it at least a 10%. Evaluating the choices that people make in the morning. Not at all. People have to, people have different uh, startups to their dates. People, it's like people are rarely consistent in how they start their day to day life, and it, you never know what kind of day they're having on the day you met them. I would argue against that, especially towards the people who are extroverts. Introverts, yeah, I can believe that. It's like they don't care what they put on, but. In that sort of way, they do make some decisions. Like, an introvert that doesn't care the way, about the way that they look will just throw anything on. And you see that decision if they ever go outside. An extrovert projects how they want to communicate with other people around them, what they're into, what their interest may or may not be based on how they dress. Like, so your percentage, your percentage on their external appearance fluctuates whether or not they're an introvert or extrovert. No, I'd still give it 10%, because if I see you walking around with nothing but slacks and a very loose-fitting shirt, I'm going to think you're an introvert that just got lost and went outside. <laughs> but still, 10% is not enough to really get to know a person. No, that's still very, that's still dangerously low. That's, that's a naked... That's naked Samus Aaron with only a missile upgrade. Right. So don't take me saying that a person's choice and how they dress is how you determine who that person is. You still need to take the time to get to know them. We're gone off topic again. Yeah. Cheat code. Cheat code talk. Back to that. But it's like we have. It's like all right. Perfect example. We have different views on people's external uh, external appearance and how much that plays into that person's actual character overall. Neither one of us broad stroke the other one or like tried to disparage the other's character. We didn't use cheat code talk to try and win the conversation. It, it, that's, that's another thing. Conversations aren't debates. It's not something to be won all the time conversations they're meant to inform each other it's like to get to take the time to get to know the extra percentage that makes up a person so you can understand them better i don't even know what kind of percentage you would take it would take if you got to get to know someone's ideology it de it only it only depends on if their ideology is the focal point of their existence or not that video we saw last that man's ideology was all about veganism yeah no it's the it was the focal point of his existence right someone's yeah. sexuality someone's uh, racial yeah. identification it's like they make that their entire being and nothing beyond that it's like and they also place their pride in it they do and that is a very damning thing to do in that pride they start to find ways to villainize anyone that goes against them, picking out those special words that they can use against somebody. Which means, have an effect. right, which means they are loading up their pistol with cheat code talk to walk into conversations. This is a bad move. I say anyone that uses the Black Lives Matter movement ideology to just disparage all white people. And completely shoot down any quote unquote white person or anyone that is in defense of white people as just being what subject to the white power being pushed down by the white man. Right. It's like you have to understand that despite, look, despite where society has placed white folks, even within their group, there is still struggles. It's like you only it's like you can't just look at white people based on the color of their skin. 
or shoot them down every time they try to speak up and be like, I was like, no, I was like, I'm not trying to push anyone down. I was like, I want to help out, but y'all keep just looking at me and saying like, fuck you. Yeah, it's like, Pete, that, that's where, look, okay, okay, okay. And that's, that's actually where uh, I get some of my evidence that black people can be racist towards white people because they will actually say it is in white people's nature to go into systems, mess it up from the inside and try to take it over. That is like, it's in their nature to act like that despite how well, it despite how well they're presenting themselves or how much they're coming across as wanting to help. <laughs> that it's in their nature to be devilish. Oh, that sounds very similar. You know, no, that's part of the conversation. <clears throat> And that is very, that's very racist because now you're writing off an entire race of people as being a lesser because they don't have control over what you have called their nature. That's dusty. It doesn't help, that's for damn sure. No, it doesn't help anything. And if anything, it gives more, more excuses to just... What is the word? Like, just shoot down. Write them off. Completely. It's like, you've just disparaged the character of an entire race. That is a bad move. That is racist. It's like, it's like even when it comes to, like, uh, political views. I had heard the term victimhood not too long ago. And uh, you told me that, that that's what... That's what the right uses against the left? I will say that I hear a lot from both sides, mostly mm. from the right, mm. saying that the uh, the left are a bunch of victims and falling into the victim of the deal. Mm. See, but right there, improper use of that word, victimhood, people can abuse that to try and try to basically try and disparage the character of anybody on the opposing side that they see fit that's saying something that they don't want to hear. And it, it's like they'll lean on that to completely disregard that person's opinion and anything they're saying. Like calling a person racist, a homophobe, mm. part of the patriarchy. Right. It's it, like turned, it's, it turned a word that actually meant something into a weapon. A cheat code. Yeah, a cheat code. Cheat code talk, as much as we want to lean on it and try and body slam people and crush people with it, that's it's a it's cheat. Like, right. It's like I thought we were I thought we were trying to have a conversation here. No, you're just looking to win. It's like and win what? And to what end? It's like, look, stop, look, 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 look. If we're really trying to progress as a people, you have to stop making your, you have to stop making your push in this quote unquote conversation. You have to stop making it look like a pursuit for power. Because that is where you would thrive with cheat code talk. When you're trying to just, when you're just trying to become king of the hill, when you're just trying to push as far as you can, despite what, despite what anyone else has to say, that's where you would use cheat code talk. And I feel like those are the worst people. can't exactly keep people from using cheat codes. Mm, no, I can't. But we can make people aware that that's what that is. And when you're trying to hold a conversation and you catch, you can, it's like you being aware of that and being aware of that's what that is, it gives people some defense because they don't really know what's going on. If I'm in the middle of a conversation and someone wants to call me a racist right out the, right off the bat, it's like, yo, that's cheat code talk. It's like, I don't have to go on the defense. It's like, ah, we're not using cheat code talk here. Stay with me right here. Talk. That could be dangerous on its own. Yeah. I realize that, right? It's like the example you brought up to me earlier about 
people misusing victim mode. Mm -hmm. Knew they could misuse cheat, cheat code. code. It's like, but it's anyone like that, anyone that does hear this video could go in and be like, oh, that's what it's called. I'm gonna use this in my conversations next time. No, that's too simple. It's like, but you, and it's on a case to case basis. It's like, look, okay, okay, okay. If you're having a conversation in private, we're not gaslighting over here. That is like the worst thing you can do to somebody. That is one of the worst. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let me rephrase that and make sure I say it correct. Attacks on pe the, uh, mental attacks. Attacks on people's mental state. Mental attacks against another human being is some of the worst shit you can do as a person. It's worse than physical debatably worse than spiritual attack on what people use in their day-to-day -day lives to navigate life mental attacks inexcusable so gaslighting we're not doing that over here and if you use what i just brought up cheat code talk as a way to gaslight somebody in a private conversation there's no way i'm gonna know about it but sh what else can i fucking say except shame on you Uh, you know your grandma would hate to see you smoke, but so long as she doesn't see, it's like it surely it wouldn't hurt her. It does. It hurts her soul. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> yeah, her black over here. Every time he's trying to gaslight someone using his words, <laughs> shame on you. Oh, shame, shame, shame. <laughs> like I'm just, you, I'm just losing sleep. It's like I can tell somebody just misused that shit. <laughs> Someone ain't getting a cookie next time they visit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like we're not gaslighting over here. Attack on people's mental is some of the worst things you can do because damage to that sometimes cannot be fixed. Sometimes you're not even around to correct it if you just so happen to have the goodness in your heart to correct damage you've caused. And then that person's going to be stuck like that. Mental, mental damage is a mother. But yeah, I, it's like we're, we're trying to identify cheat code talk to try and help people, to try and help people defend against people that are just trying to write them out of the conversation. It's like if you're gonna have the conversation, to have the conversation, you have to hear both sides. It's fair. And it's not even so much about being fair, but true history. True stories come from both points of views. You're, if you're gonna hear the real thing, you've gotta hear both sides. And some stuff's gonna get shaved off when you line them up. But at least you're left with what was real. Well, I wonder what the revolution saw, like what the Britons saw the, the American Revolution as. I think there's a way we can find out. It's like over here in America, we just saw it as uh, people breaking away from a ty uh, tyrannical kingdom. Yeah, that's what we were taught. Yeah. So what did the Britons see it as? We probably have to take their history class and line the two up and see what see what's left. But that's what I'm talking about. If you really want to understand, you have to go the extra mile. You can't just go off of what's given to you on your side. If if you can clearly identify that this is coming from a definitive side point of view if you really want to understand you got to hear the other side that's why that's why as much as I listen to the left talk I also listen to the right talk it's like I want to under I want to understand both and really they both have good points they both got flaws too that need to be addressed but that's a conversation for another day I really just wanted to put that out there. It's like, as we try to go forward and hold actual valuable conversations to try and progress and move forward as a species, as a people, as a whatever you want to call it, don't use cheat code talk. It doesn't help. Having a conversation and actually trying to understand the other person's point of view and finding common ground is the better way. 
But I just wanted to toss that out there on the uh, on the back end of our how to conversate video. Because once we get started, it's like that's how I want us to move forward. That's how I would really want to conduct the conversations where it's like you're here. It's like despite the other person's background, you're hearing what they're saying. And it's like, look, you. I keep just thinking about coming into contact with a. It's like watching someone who is racist have a conversation with somebody. And it's like you actually get to hear why he's racist, why he believes that. And if he's actually willing to sit and hear what people are saying about how that view might be fuck shit and vice versa, it's, that would actually be something really interesting to see. It's like actually he... I've actually, I've actually, uh, heard certain conversations where people that used to be racist and they aren't anymore because they came across something that let them know that their point of view was fuck shit. It was like, oh, and, and that's the thing. Cognitive dissonance is a damning, is a damning characteristic that a lot of us have for, for people that don't know cognitive dissonance is the long way of saying hard-headed. It's the long way of saying that like, despite what I hear, I'm still gonna believe what I wanna believe. For the textbook definition of cognitive dissonance, the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs, or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. It's where it's like, despite what you hear, you still cling to whatever it is that you believe. That is really the only one. I mean, well, did you? I mean, we could paraphrase it. I mean, you already did. It's just that would be that would be like saying that would be like saying uh. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't know. They, there's always easy examples. An example of cognitive dissonance is like someone saying, it, this was a racial stereotype at one point. It's like all black people are lazy. But then you see black track stars or you see black construction workers or you see someone just, re you see like black people really strive and somehow you just don't see them at all. They didn't exist. They're not part of the norm. Or even worse. Or even worse, they just get written off as the good one, trying to take them out of the data so their data stays absolute. Yeah, they're all lazy. It's like, yo, that's data. You got to factor that in. As in, they aren't all anymore. It's like, well, then most of them are. It's like, you're going to keep finding those hard workers. You're going to keep finding, you're going to keep finding the exception. And then you're going to find out Oh, I might actually be wrong, but you have to be willing to take that step. You can't put pride. You can't put pride in these things. You shouldn't really be holding on to pride at all. But that's a mistake a lot of us make. It's a mistake to think that race has a, has a lot to do with how you act as a human being. It's like you start to forget that every single race all stem from the same human being. It's like, whether you're Mexican, white, black, Arabic, still humans, still capable of being lazy, athletic, ambitious, completely shitheads. Right. The color of your skin is, at its core, no more relevant than the color of your eyes. But that's a conversation for another time. Don't use cheat code talk, people. If you like what you heard, dislike what you heard, let us know. Come to the ring. Follow us on Discord. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. It's this long. It's this long everywhere. I wanted to go ahead and wrap it up because I don't like these videos being too long. But don't use cheat code talk, please. It doesn't help anything. <laughs> Sugar on top. He was like, fuck that. I'm using cheat code talk everywhere. <laughs> I'm black. Just, just a spike, Grandma. No, wait. Top, top comment on the video. You're racist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I'm black, everyone. <laughs> I'm bald. And it's this long. Y'all have a nice night. Crazy.